All right, back here for round four, one and two, unfortunately, but we're going to see if we can salvage our dignity this round. Uh, Mulligan did one lander into this pretty awkward black-white tokens epitome of hand where we kind of have just these crappy mismatch parts that may or may not pan out. Um, opponent also Mulligan to six. We're going to keep... If our scry hits like another fetch land or white land, we're probably just gonna be forced to not crack our Arid Mason on turn one and, and play Inquisition, which is a little awkward, but I think it's important that we're able to hit double white in three lands, so there's the land I just spoke about. Our opponent went down to five cards, and they have not decided where they're gonna put their scry yet. going on top. Alright, so we're just going to play our Arid Mesa and sheepishly pass the turn. Ooh, Tron. This is a matchup I am pretty afraid of, and <laughs> where things like Oriog Champion just do not look impressive at all. I'm going to start by cracking this for a Goblet Shrine, playing an Inquisition. Uh, so our opponent's hand's pretty redundant. They have an expedition map and a Sylvan Scrying. Uh, just based on the fact that they have a Chromatic Sphere and they should be able to cast their Sylvan Scrying no matter what, I think it's better just to break up whatever costs the least. So because expedition map costs three and Sylvan Scrying costs two, we're just going to take that. Leaving them with a warm coil, which we can answer with this path to exile, so it's not quite all doom and gloom, but still not looking too good since we don't really have any pressure. We're able to draw something like a lingering souls, which we can pair with this intangible virtue. Maybe we have a shot, but opponent has found a second piece of the Urzatron, and they're gonna play their map and set up for a turn four Tron, probably. Spellskite. Well, that is a way for them to protect against this path to exile. Drew a spectral procession we cannot cast, so I'm just gonna go ahead and play this Oriarch Champion. Twiddle my thumbs a bit as my opponent's powerful mana engine gets online. Okay, there's a Lingering Souls that is part of the winning recipe we need. Still going to need a little bit more help, I think, now that uh, our Path to Exile is not good against this Worm Coal Engine, but we'll see what happens. Opponent will fetch up in Urza's Mine. Now I expect to see that warm coil engine come down. Gain a life though. Let's see. So now because I do not have the option of just removing Worm Coil Engine with the Path to Exile. I think it's better off just to get as much stuff onto the battlefield as possible, so I'm gonna play Spectral Procession this turn. Just try to flood the board with creatures and potentially outrace the 6-6 six -six Lifelinker. for two in the air and basically dead if our opponent really ever draws another big spell so not a good spot to be crack their chromatic star for red if they were to draw even like a pyroclasm we're probably done for 
This expedition map can find an Ibugan, which can't be activated this turn, but will soon lead into a never-ending stream of large artifact creatures and or Eldrazi. decides to play Ghost Quarter for the turn and just sit tight on their map for now. We're going to take this hit. Definitely have no chance of winning if we're jump blocking. Uh, so again, I think our best shot of winning is just kind of jam as hard as we can. So I'm going to play this Intangible Virtue, send with all my flyers. Put a decent little chunk in our opponent's life total. Flashback this Lingering Souls. And presumably our opponent's now going to search up their Eye of Ugin. So in two turns we can get Ulamogged. So this next turn, we're gonna smack our opponent for 14. So, ooh, wow, okay. Uh, seven times three is 21. So I guess we have lethal if nothing goes terribly wrong here. All right, awesome, completely stole that game. I thought we had basically no chance after turn two. All right, things are going to get a little bit better after board. We got these stony silences, these duresses. I think surgical extraction is definitely where we want to be in conjunction with our fulminator mages and our ghost quarters. We can try to knock out our opponent's Urzatron. These Oriac champions are no good. Timely reinforcements, same. Murderous cuts, not exciting. Slaughter pack's not exciting. Path to Exile is okay. It can theoretically answer Warm Coil Engine. Disenchant, I'm probably interested in bringing in. I think based on what we have here, we probably just want to get rid of these Path to Exiles, actually. Maybe a Path is better than a Disenchant. Disenchant on the draw is probably not going to be able to hit something like an Expedition Map. Maybe it can hit like Oblivion Stone or whatever, but it's it's such like a long shot of this card doing something effective on the draw. I think we'd rather just have a Path to Exile in case we want to remove Spell Skyde or Worm Coil Engine or something like that. So I think we're just gonna stick with this. Things definitely get a little bit better post board with uh, more land destruction and surgical extraction. So I think we were pretty fortunate to steal that first game with that lucky intangible virtue draw. Alright, this hand's interesting. It's a little heavy on lands, but we do have a ghost quarter, and we also have a better blossom and a lingering souls. It's really just one piece of disruption off of being a great hand, so it, it's tough to say whether this is better than the average six. I think on the draw when we're kind of going to be forced just playing turn two blossom, turn three lingering souls, and we probably aren't afforded just to activate our ghost quarter. I think this hand's just going to be too slow, unfortunately. All right, this isn't much better, but we do have an Inquisition on turn one, which is key. So I'm going to keep definitely going to bottom that vault to the Archangels. All right, Fulminator Mage is an awesome draw. So now if we can hit something like a Sylvan Scrying to buy us a little time and then play our Bitter Blossom and then Fulminator Mage, maybe we have a real shot at winning this game. 
Because we have the Fetter Keith, I have no problem just fetching up the Swamp. Okay, so our opponent has two Sylvan Scryings, the third missing Tron piece, but no real action beyond that, so... If our opponent doesn't play a threat on the third turn, then maybe we can buy some time with this Fulminator Mage and break up his mana. There's a Sylvan Scrying as expected. Fetch up. Ooh, I have Ugin. <laughs> okay. So it looks like our opponent just naturally hit the mine. That would, that would be my assumption here, so... That kind of stinks. I don't think it changes too much. On the bright side, it means they probably didn't draw a threat. Okay. No play on turn three is good. It's probably fair for us to assume that they have at least four lands in their hand, maybe just all five. I think it's a little risky to play this Stony Silence this turn. We can... So we know for sure our opponent has a second copy of Urza's Tower. So it's between Power Plant and Mine. Uh, I mean, you can get queued and try to think about the Mine games or whatever, but I think we're just going to go ahead and fire this off and not bat bother with second-guessing ourselves. So if we get one more turn of Reprieve, we can potentially get the Stony Silence down and then I think we might actually be in good shape since this Bitter Blossom should be providing us with a stream of steady threats. <laughs> no. <laughs> Should've picked the mine. I don't really think there's any reason to hold on to this Inquisition even though it's very likely just a brick. Yeah. Okay, so, so our opponent had the second copy of the mine too. So I guess we, we we probably weren't winning either way there. But thankfully they just have all lands in hand, so... Unless uh, they draw something like a Karn very shortly. Might have a shot. This Ivugan this turn uh, does mean that Hulamog can come down the following turn, so that's actually a huge problem, but... Okay, uh, Inquisition of Kozilek doesn't really offer us any help, so. Just kind of forced to get as aggressive as we can be and hopefully draw something. Probably just drawing Dead to the Sulamog, actually, though. It looked like we had some hope, but there just never was any hope. Here comes a Ceaseless Hunger to eat some of our stuff. In this case, Shamley Vents and Bitter Blossom. So this is another argument for keeping in some number of copies of Path to Exile, but usually when you're in the position where Ulamog is coming into play, then I don't think it really matters too much. Like, even if I were to path to exile my opponent's Ulamog, they could just search up another one or eventually get an Emrakul or whatever other nonsense they're playing, so. Looks like we will be losing this game shortly. Maybe you should have even just conceded there, just to not expose as much of my sideboard as I could. Since we basically have no shot of winning. And Ostone, despite being shut down by Stony Silence, don't think it's gonna matter. Alright, I guess. Soren is theoretically a live draw. Now we can hit our opponent for six, gain some life, 
Um, we are no longer dead to the or excuse me the ten damage or the exile trigger. But I guess our opponent can just search up another Ulamog. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's worse draws, but I, I think we're just drawing dead anyways. Yep, just keep the hunger train rolling. Guess I don't play a copy of Emrakul anymore. I think most lists just play like two or three Ulamogs. I've already I've just cut the Emrakul because this card is so powerful and much easier to cast. So this is going towards our face. I wonder if our opponent's plan is to destroy the Stony Silence, and that way O Stone covers them, but. It's really any permutation of removing relevant permanents is probably going to be the game. Sure, this makes sense. Ocean doesn't even destroy uh, Ulamog because it's indestructible. And we're done. All right, for game three, do I want any of this stuff? So I don't think Path to Exile is very good. Disenchant on the play is a little bit more appealing since we can snipe things like expedition maps. So maybe that's fine. Um. Yeah, sure, we'll just go ahead and remove this last path, make room for that, and see if we can win game three. Choose to play first. Uh, his hand's pretty awesome. We have a bunch of discard stony silence. Awkwardly, we cannot play our uh, discard spell on turn one because we have Plains Fetid Heath, but we do have the option of playing double discard spell on turn two which is pretty good. I think it's basically going to come down to whether our opponent leads on like a expedition map. If that's the case, probably going to be playing the Stony Silence. Otherwise, probably play Double Discard Spell. Same would apply to like a Tron Land plus uh, Chromatic Star or Chromatic Sphere because that way we can probably effectively blank their Sylvan Scrying by just playing the Stony Silence as well, keep them off green mana. When it has Mulligan to six, kept their hand. Let's see what they do with their scry. It's left on top. So we're just gonna play our planes and pass. Okay, there's a Tron piece into star, as I talked about. So in this case, I think it is reasonable just to play the Stony Silence and knock out that line of play like Sylvan Scream. Okay, there's an Expedition Map 2. Two Tron piece is a little scary, but looks like we might be able to firmly disrupt our opponent. Gonna lead on this Inquisition. Two Sylvan Scryings, a Nature's Claim, and an Ancient Stirrings. Hmm. So, green sources in general are pretty scary since they basically turn on the entirety of our opponent's hand. From there, they could search up the last Tron piece, destroy our Stony Silence, turn on their Expedition Map Chromatic Star. I think it's probably better just to cut off the non Sylvan Scrying cards for now. Okay. 
opponent drew a second Urza's Mine. Okay, great. So we drew a fourth land so we can get the Sworn into play and start putting some pressure on. Just going to go ahead and make a Vampire. I think it's just really important to get anything that is attacking our opponent into play. Okay, so we can choose to play our Duress and our Thoughtseize, go ahead and strip both the Sylvan Scryings from our opponent's hand, and that bricks off drawing green mana as an out to enable the Urzatron. I think based on the fact that we have a Ghost Quarter, I think that's a reasonable line of play, especially because we want to play this Intangible Virtue this turn. So I'm comfortable doing that. The last question is whether I want to tick up my Sworn or go ahead and just make a second Vampire. I'm going to be attacking for three this turn and then I'll have six power in play. So that means that will kill in three turns from now. Whereas if I plus minus and then start plusing, hit for four this turn, put our opponent to 16, on the following turn, attack them to 13, and then have six power in play. So that'll be a two turn clock. So I think it's the same number of turns, so it's probably better just to keep the Sworn in play. So we're gonna go ahead and strip the Scryings, uh, tick up the Sworn, play this Virtue, attack. And that might change the math a little bit. So I guess we'd made a vampire the previous turn. Now we would have lethal in two turns. So not something I considered, but... Oh well. And our opponent goes to 12 now. And then we have 10 in play, yeah. So I guess our, our clock is slower by a turn, so... Maybe that was a mistake after all. All right, so that was a game where our disruption was fast enough because we were on the play, we were able to get a stony silence before our opponent could use any of their artifacts and just able to get over the finish line with one threat and a bunch of disruption. Uh, so 2-2 two -two record, not too exciting, but at least we're able to end on a high note.